afternoon and welcome. This is a press conference. I believe that there was a scheduled meeting before. This is just a press conference. This is not a city council meeting. I uh, want to start this press conference in regards to the situation that we've been talking about with our city manager, Lorianne Farrell Harrison. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is a very important moment right now for the city of Costa Mesa. Can you hear me now? Okay. This is a very important moment now for the city of Costa Mesa, for Orange County, and for the entire Southern California region. We are so thankful today that we are joined by so many of our local elected officials, so many of our neighboring cities, the County of Orange, representatives from the California State Assembly, the United States Congress, other partners that we have, including the Sanitation District, the Costa Mesa Water District. And so what we will do this afternoon is we will provide you with some information regarding the latest information that we have regarding the situation with Fairview Developmental Center. And then we will open it up for questions after you hear from a series of speakers. First, I wanted to start by thanking you, the media, for being with us, for coming today, for allowing us the opportunity to communicate this very important issue that's facing the city of Costa Mesa and uh, all of our neighbors and the region as a whole. And so thank you for making the time. We know this was done with short notice, but on this issue, time is absolutely of the essence. So I'd first like to start by acknowledging all of the local leaders that are here. As you can see, we are flanked by quite a contingent of Orange County at state and federal officials that are united with the city of Costa Mesa on this issue. And so I'd like to just let you know who's here with us today. I'm just gonna read out a series of names for you so that you understand the partnerships, the relationships that we have and the importance of this to our community. First and foremost, we have our mayor, Katrina Foley, our mayor pro tem, John Stevens. We have individual members of our city council including third district council member Andrea Marr, fourth district council member Manuel Chavez, fifth district council member Arliss Reynolds, council member at large Sandra Guinness, council member at large Alan Mansour, United States Congressman Harley Ruda representing the cities of Costa Mesa, Fountain Valley, Huntington Beach, Laguna Beach, Laguna Niguel, Newport Beach, and Seal Beach. We also have California Assemblywoman, Cotty Petrie Norris, representing the cities of Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, Irvine, Laguna Beach, Laguna Woods, and Newport Beach. We have second district supervisor and chair of the Orange County Board of Supervisors, Michelle Steele, representing the cities of Costa Mesa, Cypress, Huntington Beach, Los Alamitos, La Palma, Newport Beach, Seal Beach, Stanton, Fountain Valley, and Buena Park. We have Newport Beach City Council Member Diane Dixon, Newport Beach City Council Member Jay Brenner, Joy Brenner, Newport Beach City Council Member Jeff Hardman, Irvine City Council Member Bara Khan, Westminster City Council Member Deirdre Nguyen. She's from Garden Grove. From Garden Grove, forgive me. Mesa Water District President Sean Duane. Mesa Water District Board Vice President Maris De Pasquale. Mesa Water District Board Member James Fisler. Mesa Water District Board Member Brock Miller. Costa Mesa Sanitary District Board Member Arlene Schaefer. Field Representative for the United States Senator Diane Feinstein, Christian Buha. Lahaj. Lahaj. Thank, you. Thank you. District Director for State Senator John Morlock, Scott Carpenter. Our Chief here in the city of Costa Mesa, Dan Stefano. Our Acting Chief, our Acting Police Chief, Brian Glass. Director of the Orange County Healthcare Agency, Richard Sanchez. The Orange County Health Officer, Dr. Nicole Quick, MD, MPH, 
Nahal Kazemi, Senior Counsel at the law firm of Keller Anderley. So as you can see, we have been supported by quite a few of our neighbors, our neighboring cities, the County of Orange, representatives from the United States Congress, from our state legislature, neighboring cities, and the special districts that we do business with every day. This is of grave concern to the city of Costa Mesa. I will make a few remarks about the information that we have at this time, and then we will turn it over to our Mayor Katrina Foley. Late Thursday evening, we received a phone call from the California Office of Emergency Services that as early as Sunday evening, there was a possibility that Fairview Developmental Center would be the recipient of potentially between 30 to 50 individuals or patients or people who had been exposed to coronavirus. We were provided that information in anticipation of a potential uh, transportation of those individuals from the Travis Air Force Base and possibly other locations. Immediately, we began to coalesce to try to get as much information as possible about how this transfer would happen and all the steps that we needed to take to get ready and to also find out more about how this site was identified and what was the vetting process for the site. Within the last 24 hours, the City Council has taken swift and decisive unanimous action to hold an emergency meeting, to file an injunction, a temporary restraining order in order to halt the process until we get additional information. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our mayor, Katrina Foley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. My name is Katrina Foley, the mayor of Costa Mesa. I also want to thank, uh, we are so grateful for our community partners and all of you to drop everything that you're doing and be here for us today because this isn't just about Costa Mesa. This is about our Orange County region. And we are all united in addressing this, what we think is a public health crisis here in our community. As the city manager indicated, we took swift, decisive action, and it was unanimous as soon as we could. We want to make sure that the community knows that the city of Costa Mesa has no role in deciding whether or not these individuals who have been tested positive for coronavirus are to be transported into our community. And so, because we were not given the opportunity to play a role in that decision, we decided that the only way that we could stop the process was to seek a federal court judge's help and get the injunction. We were able to do that with the amazing help of Keller Anderley's firm and Nahal Kazimi, who, I, did she raise her hand? Raise your hand, yes. I also want to give a shout out to our city attorney and their team and our entire city team who dropped everything to address this issue. You can be proud of your city staff and the work that they are doing to protect the safety and security of our community. And they literally have dropped everything that we were working on to be able to address this crisis. Uh, we have received an injunction temporarily, and we will be going into court on Monday at 2 p.m. for a hearing at the Santa Ana Federal Courthouse. Um, tomorrow, uh, we will expect to receive a response from the defendants as to our application. And hopefully, at that point, we will finally get some answers to the numerous questions that we have regarding this matter. We have more unanswered questions than we have answers at this time. You know, I first learned about this, uh, you know, in the evening around 6 p.m. on Thursday night. And we were notified officially to our city team about 5.20 p.m. on Thursday night. 
that is not the best practices for moving people into a community and opening up a facility to treat people who have a contagious infectious disease. That is not a good best practice. And we swiftly move to protect the safety and security of our community. Um, we also want to make sure that people know that we're a compassionate community. We serve our community well. We recently opened a homeless shelter so that we could provide services and help people. But we are not going to continue to be the place where everybody drops off their crises and expects us to correct it. So you may have a lot of questions, and you should not get frustrated by the fact that some of our um, responses will not be that elaborate. We don't know at this time how many people. We've actually just had speculation. We don't know what the time frame is for how long there is an expectation that this facility be utilized. We don't know. Will the local area hospitals be needed? Will we require our first responders to help with this uh, transfer? We have speculative information, but we don't have any kind of a real plan. We have never been provided anything that would be what anyone would be considerate of a plan. So at this time, um, everything is moving way too fast. And we're doing everything we can to respond. We're so appreciative to all of the residents. I see a lot of residents here today. And I know that all of us city council members, we have been receiving texts and Facebook messages and emails um, expressing your concern. I just today received an uh, a Facebook message from a gentleman whose house is literally behind the wall right adjacent to the facility. Thank you. Thank you. I have a pregnant wife. Okay. I'm so sorry. And you know what? Okay, we are going to do our best to protect your family. That is our job. So it's a very emotional issue. We're going to try to uh, stay factual. But we all have families up here, and we are all concerned. Um, so I want to urge you all to reach out to Mark Young, the regional administrator for the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response at the US Department of Health and Human Services. And make sure you get out your phones or your pens and write this number down. He can be contacted at 415-633-5500. For inquiries about these operations. It's the least that they can do to answer questions from our community about why Costa Mesa, why now, and why not engage our locals. So thank you again for being here. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Chairwoman of the Board of Supervisors, Michelle Steele, to come up to the podium and give the county response. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Crowley. You know, this disease is the most dangerous disease ever, and it's spreading so fast. And my question is, why we have to bring these patients to be? that from Northern California to Southern California, most populated area in Orange County. We have families here, and we have children here, you just talked about, and we have schools nearby, and we didn't have any details. And just suddenly, they said, we're gonna just send these people down to your location. It's not really acceptable. We had one patient, he got healed from Hoga Hospital, and he was released. Now we don't need any more people, somebody who might gonna be really getting sick, and somebody's gonna spread in our neighbors. Our public health safe, safety is the most important part. So we're gonna do whatever we can, and I really appreciate City of Costa Mesa that what you initiated, what you did. 
and hopefully that we're gonna work together and we're gonna stop this. We really don't need it. At the same time, as Mayor said, that we don't have any details. It's really interesting that, you know what, we're gonna just bring these patients in to your county. No, this is the most populated county. We don't need this. So this is another so much big problem that you know we really don't need Orange County and we're gonna move forward, we're gonna work together with the city, we're gonna work with the other 34 cities and we're gonna stop this. So thank you very much thank for all you. coming today. I also wanna thank uh, the board for agreeing to bring an amicus brief on behalf of the city of Costa Mesa and in support of our injunctive relief, as well as thank the city of Newport Beach and Mayor O'Neill and their team for also agreeing to uh, file an, um, what's called an amicus brief, which is a friend of the court brief, uh, to support our efforts. And then I finally want to thank Oakview uh, School District and Gina Clayton Tarvin, who is the president of that district, for engaging their lawyers to also file an amicus brief on our behalf. At this time, I would like to invite our Assemblywoman, Cotty Petrie Norris, to the podium to talk to you about what her efforts are that she's doing to help us as a partner. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Foley. And good afternoon. I am Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris. I represent the 74th Assembly District. And let me, let me start by saying that my heart goes out to everyone around the world, the Americans, the Californians who are battling coronavirus. And let me second say that my number one priority as your Assemblywoman is the health and safety of our community and of California. As you've heard, uh, the federal government and federal authorities are in the process of identifying a California site that uh, can house and treat California coronavirus patients, and the Fairview Developmental Center has been identified as one of the potential sites. I would be confounded, confounded if our state and federal government decided to locate this facility here at the Fairview Developmental Center. This is a site that is 450 miles away from the Travis Air Force Base where the patients are currently being housed. And this is a site that is in the middle of a densely populated residential community. I am not a public health expert and don't purport to be one, but that just doesn't make sense. And I will continue to urge our federal government and our state government to identify an alternative site where Californians can be cared for and where we can ensure that Californians will be protected. As we move forward in battling what is a global health crisis, it is absolutely critical that we have strong and effective partnerships between our local, state, and federal elected officials and public health officials. We need to ensure that we have effective partnerships, effective coordination, and effective communication in order to contain this epidemic and prevent a public health crisis here on American soil. So I wanna thank everyone for being here today and I want to thank Mayor Foley and the city of Costa Mesa for your leadership. Thank you so much. And that, those partnerships are key. Uh, it was the assemblywoman in her office that alerted me to this issue and got us to really be more aggressive about working on this. So we are so grateful for all your help. I also want to bring to the podium our Congressman Harley Ruda, whose team has been working with us and trying to research issues that relate to federal actions and who was so generous to take my call at close to midnight on Thursday night while we were trying to find solutions. So he's someone who is accessible and accountable and who has been very, very helpful to us. So Congressman Harley Ruda. 
Thank you, Mayor Foley, and thanks to all of you uh, concerned citizens for being here today. Uh, let's be clear, we do have deep sympathy for those who are infected with this virus, uh, whether they are here in California, across the United States, or across the globe. Uh, but let's also be clear, all of us as elected officials representing you have an obligation for your safety and welfare as well. And I am grateful that the mayor and the city council took the bold action that they did with the amicus brief to stop the uh, housing taking place of these individuals. Because we have to stop and pause and ask ourselves, why now, why here? And I will tell you, uh, Mayor Foley is correct. We were talking uh, with Assemblywoman Cuddy as well on Thursday evening. My reaction was that this was a hoax, that there is no way this is happening without any coordination with local officials. You and us, we deserve to know who made this decision, how it was made within the administration, what was the process that took place, what other sites were, were considered, what other sites were not used and for what reasons, why was it not communicated to local officials, and if some local officials were communicated to and didn't share it with the rest of us, we need to know the answers to that as well. Because it's clear there's been a tremendous breakdown in communication. And for something as serious as the coronavirus, this is not the time to have a breakdown in communication. This is the time where you need leadership, you need coordination, you need transparency, and you need to have a plan. And I am very, very concerned with the potential location here that we have not even considered the potential health effects to the Costa Mesa and surrounding communities, the economic effects to the Costa Mesa community and surrounding areas, and we deserve answers to that. Finally, again, I want to applaud the bold, decisive leadership of Mayor Katrina Foley in the unbelievable assistance we got from Assemblywoman Cotty Norris uh, in making sure that we were able to address this issue and react in a timely manner. Thank you for your leadership. So before we take questions, I also want to thank personally our Mayor Pro Tem John Stevens, who has been very helpful in helping us with a legal strategy, and our council members, Andrea Marr, who her district abuts the Fairview Development Center, and so she has been fielding many calls from residents and trying to be as responsive as possible, and Councilman uh, Manuel Chavez, who also has been very responsive to the community. Our entire city team is here to work on this until we get a solution. So at this time, we'll take some questions. You brought the ball. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, as far as we are concerned, uh, we did not get proper information from the CDC and the Department of Health, Health and Human Services. Um, who are the command control on this matter. And so from our perspective, the federal government did not provide us with the proper information that we would need to be able to respond. Under who control is the uh, developmental center? And how does that play into whether it gets used or not? Yes, the, the state owns the Fairview Development Center property. But as we understand it, and Chief, Acting Chief Glass, you may be able to provide better information here, but as we understand it, when the federal government uh, comes in, they pretty much take over jurisdiction. What happens Monday at the uh, meeting at 2 o'clock? What, what happens on your side? What happens on their side? What happens? Right. Nahal, do you want to come over? Um, we will have a hearing before Judge Satin, and I'll allow you to go ahead and give us an, a brief synopsis of what to expect. Sure. So uh, Monday at 2 p.m., we will go and explain to the judge why we believe that nothing should happen until there is cooperation, coordination with the local officials, until we can get comfort that there's been actual vetting of this site, that it's being made into an appropriate facility, if it's actually going to be used, if they've actually done a determination that this is an appropriate site, that it can be somewhere they can safely house and treat people because there are a lot of concerns about the condition of the facility. The federal government and the state will be allowed to present their arguments 
um, as to why they, sh they don't feel there should be an injunction, and the judge will make a decision at that time uh, as to whether they can move forward or we can continue uh, to put a pause on this until there's better cooperation with local officials and emergency leaders. Uh, I think that we have a very good uh, chance of winning. The judge has noticed in her order that she issued late last night that there is a serious risk of irreparable harm to this community uh, because there's been no coordination with local leadership. So we have gotten the attention of the state and the federal government. We've gotten the attention, obviously, of the community and the media. And we think that that's going to be very, very helpful in making sure that uh, local officials are consulted properly and that the safety of this community is paramount. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure. My name is Nahal Kazemi. That's N-A-H-A-L-K-A-Z-E-M-I. I'm senior counsel at Keller Anderley. Well, just a week ago, we were informed by the State Department of General Services that it would be inadequate to put a homeless shelter there. So you tell me, is it adequate for infectious disease? Well, that is possible, but we will take all legal recourse that we have available to us to prevent any kind of expediting of this situation. We will do whatever we can to protect the safety and security of our community. And certainly to have people transported here on Tuesday would not be safe or secure for our community in our opinion. At this time, we're not convinced that it's okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. City Manager Farrell Harrison may have an answer to that. So to your point, there has been conflicting information given at all different levels of government. So depending on who we speak to, we get a different story. We just want the facts. We want the truth. We want to understand how was this site selected? What was the vetting process? Is that consistent with the Centers for Disease Control's quarantine and isolation policies? Why Costa Mesa? Why Fairview? And additional information about how it is that this is supposed to transpire. It could have an impact on our community, obviously. Our first responders are more than willing and prepared to, to make our community safe and anyone else who needs emergency aid. But we need facts and we need information and we need for it to be consistent, clear, and transparent. Can you repeat your question? Do you have reason to believe they would be cared for if people were brought here, that they would be taken care of in a quarantine I'd like to bring uh, Dr. Nicole Quick from Orange County Health to respond to that question. Hi there. So um, I, as far as what the information that has been shared, our general understanding is this would be a state and federal run operation with the understanding that if we had an individual there who became seriously ill, it would be logical that they would be at one of our area hospitals. That being said, we have not had that information confirmed. Please provide your name and title. Sure. Nicole Quick, mm -hmm. County Health Officer, Orange County Health Care Agency. I also want to take a moment to thank uh, Jason Dempsey, who is our Emergency Services Administrator. Mr. Dempsey. I, I think that he has moved into our Emergency Operations Center and literally has been working on this around the clock, and it is because of his excellent work investigative research that we know as much as we know now. And it is only because of his research that we know what we know. So thank you, Mr. Dempsey. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yes.
Yes, we have a little bit more information because of some information that came out today at 4.30. Um, did Chief Glass, do you, uh, do you want Mr. Dempsey to answer that question? No? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So we don't really know. We know there's a list of, of sites and that there is supposedly a Southern California site and a Northern California site. That's all we know. Any other questions? As I said earlier, we are considering all of our legal options as well as our uh, coordination with our state and federal and community partners, and we will continue to explore whatever legal options we have available to us. Yes? Can, uh, yes, yes. So the federal government, if they declare a certain type of emergency, they have the ability to override state and local action and decision making. And so that's what we are up against. Yes. Thank you. Yes. We don't know. That's one of the questions we don't know the answer to. Yes. Uh, yes, it's a public record document. Yes. And we will be sure that those documents get added to our city website. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Has there been any um, information on personnel that are going to be provided to you that will be responsible for safety containment, testing, laboratory testing, that sort of thing that, that are going to be scheduled? Not to our knowledge. That's a great question, one that we would love the answer to but we don't have an answer for you. Any other questions? Yes. So on part of the police department and security, our, our, that is our priority, the safety of our community. We have already been in contact with uh, state police over there that are preparing. When this does, if it was to occur, it will be handled by the federal government who will be bringing in a robust security force or a group that comes in and monitors that as well as the other resources. It will be ran by the federal government. Okay, at this time, we're going to conclude our press conference. Uh, any of the individuals here are available to speak to the press individually. And please continue to monitor our website. We have a page that's dedicated to this topic, and we'll continue to do our best to update the community. Thank you for coming out today.